Namaste everyone. Welcome back uh, after your uh, holidays. And in this new session, we will be continuing with the mechanical properties of fluids. Kindly uh, do watch the last video that was sent to you before you closed for holidays. That was the first lesson video lecture on uh, mechanical properties of fluids where we discussed about uh, what's uh, pressure and uh, Pascal's law. And uh, if you uh, watched that video, we would have uh, seen the first part of the law. That means Pascal's law is only one law, but uh, it can be stated in a couple of ways. And um, we would have seen uh, one way of stating Pascal's law and we proved it and we uh, used it to explain hydraulic uh, lift and uh, hydraulic brakes. So kindly, please, those are uh, some important things that you actually see in real life. So I would very much recommend you to go back. I'm sure most of you would not be very clear about it after such a gap. So I want you to go back and uh, watch that video. It has been posted on EduNext. So kindly watch that video before you will continue with this, please. So these are going to be our objectives for today. We are going to look at the second law, actually not the uh, second law, the, uh, the second equivalent of Pascal's law in uh, transmission of fluid pressure. We are going to see what's going to happen in the absence and presence of gravity on fluid pressure. And we are going to see one wonderful uh, paradox called the uh, hydrostatic paradox, uh, right? We are going to see how pressure uh, can be used to explain the anomalic, anomalous behavior of uh, uh, such uh, uh, hydro, um, you know, hydrostatic vases. That's what will be the uh, ending of our lesson today. So let's just fast look at uh, what uh, we saw as Pascal's law. If you remember, we took up a rubber ball with a, in a number of holes in it and uh, assumed to be filled with water. And uh, when we compressed it at one point, when we pressed it, when we applied the pressure at one point, we saw that the water came out of all the holes with the you know, same intensity, that is the same pressure was mm, pushing the water at all the holes, which shows that the pressure that is applied to an enclosed liquid is going to be transmitted undiminished in all directions. That's one of the uh, one way of saying Pascal's law. And we looked at it based on which we talked about uh, hydraulic lift and hydraulic brakes. Now today, as you see, the highlighted area is the second equivalent of Pascal's law, which states that the pressure in a fluid at rest is going to be the same at all points if we are going to ignore gravity. So if gravity is going to be ignored at all points, we are going to have the pressure to be the same. And that's what we are going to try and prove today mathematically. So let's look at this first pressure exerted by a liquid column. Right, uh, so what are we going to look at? These are going to be our assumptions. We are going to consider a cuboidal container uh, whose base area is going to be A. This A is nothing but the base area and the liquid is filled to a height of H. So what do we know? On the base of the container, the thrust that is acting is nothing but the weight of the liquid column. So weight we know by Newton's second law is going to be given by m into g. Am I right, children? W is equal to m into g. Now let's look at this liquid once again. Let us assume that the density of the liquid is going to be rho. If the density is going to be rho and the mass of the liquid present at that particular height is going to be m and the volume of the liquid contained is going to be v, then we have the density to be m by v which is going to imply me that the mass of the liquid contained in the vessel is simply the density of the liquid into the volume of the liquid contained in the given vessel. So am I going to replace it over here now? Yes. What am I going to replace M with? I'm going to replace M with rho V into G. But if I look at the volume of the vessel over here, we know that volume can be given as 
base area into height and the base area here is considered to be a and the height is considered to be h in which case i'm going to write my v to be equal to rho a h into g this is what is going to be the thrust that's going to be acting the weight is going to act as thrust on the base of the cubical vessel right or any vessel of any base area a now what do we know about pressure we know that pressure of the liquid is going to be given by thrust per unit area so i am going to write pressure now so the pressure is going to be given by my thrust divided by unit area now thrust i have found it to be equal to rho a h into g divided by a and you see over here that my a gets cancelled off and i end up getting my pressure to be equal to h rho g this is going to be the pressure exerted by a liquid which is contained or which is placed in an in a in an enclosed container now we know that for a given place g is a constant so what am i again going to infer i am going to infer that for a given place in a given container the pressure exerted by the liquid is going to be directly proportional to the height of the liquid column and it is directly proportional to the density of the liquid and to our surprise we are seeing that it is independent of the base area of the container it is independent of the shape of the container that's the most important thing that we have to understand in pascal's law is that clear right so this is so what have we found out the pressure exerted by a liquid in a container is going to be given by h rho g and uh, pro, uh, provided you are measuring at the same place the pressure g remains a constant so the pressure is going to be directly proportional to the height of the liquid column and the density of the liquid contained in the liquid column so let's move on to the next one uh, the next slide in which we are going to sorry in which we are going to prove that the gravity uh, that is acting upon the liquid will slightly modify pascal's law so let's look at this figure on our uh, screens now you see a cylindrical container and you can see water or any liquid that is going to be filled to a particular height so inside that liquid i am going to consider one small element is that clear it's going to be a small element that is going to be considered i am going to consider um, a small liquid element inside here of uh, uh, height h that's going to be given by uh, this particular region you can see here right this is an arbitrary um, you know uh, uh, cylindrical element inside the liquid that i am considering for uh, mathematically showing the effect of gravity on pressure so if you look at this figure now i am going to consider the top surface and the force that is acting on the top surface is going to be given by f1 is equal to p1 into a and similarly at the bottom surface it's going to be f2 is equal to p2 into a and we also know that not only these two forces are acting on the liquid there is the weight of the liquid column which is also acting in the downward direction you can see over here weight that is acting in the downward direction so do we have only vertical forces acting on the liquid column no we do have horizontal forces also acting on the liquid column but we know that the liquid is not flowing the liquid is not in motion the liquid inside the container is at equilibrium so if i am going to consider a force that is exerted um by the wall on the liquid in this direction a diametrically opposite point will exert an equal and opposite force in the same direction so uh, you know that pressure increases with height so the pressure will increase and all these pressures all these forces 
going to be equal and opposite in nature so horizontally there is no resultant force that is going to act on the liquid element that is under consideration but vertically we can see there are three forces that is acting on the system right and we know that again since the liquid is at equilibrium the liquid is at rest uh, all these forces are expected to be balanced forces so i am going to write all the the net downward force is going to be equal to the upward force for the liquid to be in equilibrium because the liquid is at rest so what's going to be f1 that's going to be p1 into a plus what's going to be w the weight of the liquid column that's mg which is going to be equal to p2 into a right children so what am i going to say mg to be equal to mg is going to be equal to p2 minus p1 into a correct but i'm not going to be measuring the mass of the liquid we have given the uh, density of the liquid to be h and if the height of the liquid column is considered to be h what can i say about m we have done this in the previous slide what can i say about the mass mass is going to be volume into density and volume is going to be given by area into height so i am going to give it as a h rho into g will be equal to p2 minus p1 into a so what's going to happen now the a gets cancelled out commonly and i have p2 minus p1 to be equal to h rho g so what will happen in the absence of gravity that is if g becomes equal to 0 if this becomes equal to 0 then what happens my p2 becomes equal to p1 when does this happen when g is equal to 0 that is absence of gravity implies p2 is equal to p1 and this is our pascal's law that is in the absence of gravity the pressure at all points inside the liquid whether it is going to be the topmost point or the bottommost point or it is a point which is further down um, in the depth wherever the point is in the absence of gravity the pressure at all points inside the liquid is going to be the same and mathematically we have shown that pascal's law is true but what happens when gravity is going to be taken into consideration so what do we what have we arrived at we have arrived to p2 minus p1 is equal to h rho g where what is h h here is the height of the liquid column now let us assume that i push this liquid element to the surface of the liquid such that p1 becomes the pressure at the surface that is p1 becomes atmospheric pressure so i'm going to write it as pa and p2 to be the pressure at any point at a height at a depth h inside the liquid then i'm going to take it as pressure at any point p then that becomes equal to h rho g isn't that children this difference this difference in pressure when gravity is considered is what we call as gauge pressure is that clear we call it as gauge pressure gauge pressure this difference in pressure so what happens as you move within the liquid um sorry a uh, slight take in my spelling so what happens when the pressure is going to be uh, measured at a point within the liquid p becomes equal to pa plus h rho g that means my pressure at a depth is definitely greater than the atmospheric pressure my pressure at a depth is greater um, by a particular quantity that is pa um, the atmospheric pressure uh, it gets added up with the pressure at that particular height that is h rho g so it is greater by a quantity h rho g as you move within the liquid it does not stay as atmospheric pressure and this difference is what we call as gauge pressure 
So this is the modification in uh, Pascal's law when you are going to consider gravity. When in the absence of gravity, Pascal's law is obeyed very strictly by all the liquids. But in the presence of gravity, there is a slight modification in this law. This pressure becomes Pa plus H rho G. That is at a particular height, at all points at that particular depth, the pressure remains the same if gravity is taken into consideration. Is that clear, children? So that's about uh, mathematically proving um, your uh, Pascal's law, uh, right? Now we will look at the uh, points that we put forth as we were discussing this particular uh, topic. The liquid pressure is the same at all points, um, at the same horizontal level or at the same depth. Isn't that true, children? This is uh, true. Just now I told you, just a while ago I told you this. And pressure at any point inside the fluid depends on the depth. And we talked about what is gauge pressure. And we also said that pressure does not depend upon the area of the base or the shape of the vessel. And uh, in the absence of gravity, there is no pressure difference that would exist between any two points inside the liquid, there is no necessity that the two points have to be at the same depth. It could be any two points in the liquid and any such two points will have the uh, same pressure. That means there will be no pressure difference. Particularly understand that this is in the absence of gravity. Is that clear children? So this is the effect of gravity on um, Pascal's law or on the transmission of pressure in a given fluid. So the one thing that we have to remember very, very clearly is that the pressure does not depend on the base area or the shape of the vessel. So based on this, we are going to look at a very beautiful phenomenon that is called as hydrostatic paradox. Now, if you know the answer, well and good. If you do not know the answer, take this up as a riddle and try and solve it. On your boards now, you see three different containers. The only similarity in these three containers is that they all have liquid filled to the same height. I should not say that as the only similarity. The other similarity is they all contain the same liquid filled to the same height and they all have the same base area. That's very important. They all have the same base area. Now you can see that all of these three are connected to a meter, a gauge. Now what is this? This measures the pressure at the uh, base of each of these vessels. Is that clear? It's called as a pressure meter. And this is actually going to measure the pressure. Now what do we know pressure is? Pressure is equal to force or thrust per unit area. Force acting normally, that is thrust per unit area. And what do we know about force? Force is nothing but mass into gravity upon area. Now for these three vessels that we have considered, it's on the in the same place, on the same table. So G is going to remain practically constant. And I have told you that all these three are going to have the same base area. So that means A remains a constant. So in this case, we expect pressure to be directly proportional to mass of the liquid contained in the vessel. Are we not right, children? That is what we expect. So obviously, the first vessel over here, which contains a greater amount of liquid, will show a greater pressure in the meter. And this third one, which has lesser amount of liquid, in comparison to uh, the other two should have a lesser reading in the meter because it has a lesser mass of the liquid enclosed in it. Isn't that what we expect children as a layman? If I'm going to tell you what is pressure and I'm going to show you such a setup and ask you which meter will read more, then the person will definitely choose one because one has more liquid than the other. But, but, because we are going to look at it under paradox. What's the paradox that's going to be observed? What is the anomaly that is going to be observed? Is that all the three meters show the same reading. 
that means the pressure is going to be the same as in each of them it's the same p pascal p pascal p pascal there is no a uh, maximum or minimum value in this particular setup and we are going to try and understand what is that particular what is the reason behind the pressure meters showing the same reading now before going into that let's try and recall resolving of vectors so let's look at this particular figure do you see that if this is going to be overlapped with this particular cylinder just imagine that you're going to take the first vas and uh, overlap it with the second one then you can see that all these areas are going to sorry all these areas are going to overlap this area will overlap with the cylinder and these area the water in these areas these two areas area 2 and area 1 becomes the excess water in the container but what do we know you see that the uh, the the sides the walls of the container are slanting and and what is going to happen the normal reaction of the water on the wall and back to the water by the wall is going to be perpendicular to the wall please understand this is the reaction wherever the reaction is always normal to the surface please understand weight acts vertically down but the reaction is always normal to the surface so this is going to be the reaction by the wall and please if you had looked at my if you had listened to my first video i have taught you about resolving vectors that are not either along the x axis or the y axis neither along the x nor the y so that means this will be resolved into the horizontal component and the vertical component right now if you look at the horizontal component if i'm going to write it as fh there will be a similar horizontal component that will come from this face here right diametrically opposite point so these two horizontal components will balance each other but look at the vertical component what happens to the vertical component all the weight of the liquid in this area in this volume is going to be balanced weight at every point is going to act vertically downwards isn't it children at every point here is going to act vertically downwards but all these weights that is fg are going to be balanced by fv so eventually the water that is present in region 1 and region 2 the weight is not felt because it is going to be balanced by the vertical component of the reaction by the slanted walls please understand that very clearly let's look at once again this is the slanted slanting wall the reaction is going to be perpendicular to the wall but i am going to resolve it into my horizontal component and vertical component the horizontal component is going to be balanced by a similar horizontal component from the other slanting face but what happens to the vertical component that vertical component is going to balance the weight of the liquid that is going to act vertically downward and hence the water that is present in all these places do not affect the reading in the pressure meter because effectively it is this volume the water that is present in this particular region that is going to contribute to the pressure and not those that are present outside this boundary and hence and hence this particular vas shows the same reading in the pressure meter as the cylindrical one now let's look at the smaller one right let's look at the smaller vas right now when you look at the smaller vas the 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 inclination of the vessel is going to be in this direction 
So that means the reaction is going to be perpendicularly down. Again, I'm going to resolve it into horizontal component and vertical component, right? Now horizontal component FH, I have a similar face on the other side. It's going to be balanced by the horizontal component from the other face. But what happens to the vertical component? This vertical component is going to add to the weight of the liquid that is present in the container. Yes or no? Throughout this slanting phase, throughout this slanting phase, every point, the vertical component of the reaction is going to add to the weight of the liquid at the face. So that means effectively, there is an excess weight that comes up equivalent to the water that is present in this volume. Isn't it children? Because you have an excess vertical component that is acting in the downward direction. So that will add up to the weight. So though you look at the vas and feel that the water is less, the weight will appear to be more because of the vertical component of the reaction that is acting in the downward direction, which is going to uh, show um, that eventually this cylindrical area is going to contribute to the pressure red in the meter that is connected to the base of the vases. Is that clear, children? Is that clear? So at every point, there is a vertical component that is adding to the weight. Whereas in the case of the previous vase, which was a bigger vase, um, it is the, sorry, it is the uh, vertical component that is canceling off the excess weight. So eventually what happens is vase one ho, vase two ho, ya vase three, whether it is one, two or three, it is effectively only this region that is going to contribute to the pressure at the base, which is similar and which proves a beautiful fact that for the given liquid, the pressure is independent of the shape and the pressure is independent of the size of the container. It only depends upon the height to which the liquid column is filled in the given container, which proves our Pascal's law. Is that clear, children? Please, this is a very beautiful phenomenon. You can you can res research on it. Uh, you can uh, read about it, and it's quite interesting because when you look at it, it is very hard to believe that the uh, smaller uh, inverted uh, cone uh, is going to show the same pressure as the big one, which is holding quite a large amount of liquid when compared to the third was and that's the proof for our pascal's law is that clear children so we have looked at and we have analyzed using vector algebra and we have proved that the weight appears to be the same in all of them due to the vertical component of the weight that is the reaction that is acting on the slanting walls is that clear children so this is the second equivalent of pascal's law that we have seen and we have shown mathematically that in the absence of gravity, the pressure is going to remain the same at all points. And in the presence of gravity, the pressure is going to be the same at a given level. And um, it is going to be above atmospheric pressure. So these should have been the outcomes for today's lesson. We stated Pascal's second law, basically not the second law, but the second equivalent of Pascal's law of transmission of fluid pressure. And we proved that gravity uh, alters, yeah, modifies Pascal's law on um, the fluid pressure. And we tried to explain the, uh, you know, the result that we obtain in hydrostatic vases using uh, vector algebra, that is uh, uh, resolving of vectors. I again repeat, please, I would very much recommend you to watch the previous video before you will watch this, then you will have a better idea about the resolving of vectors using which we have tried to explain the anomalous result of hydrostatic passes. Is that clear, children? So um, 
be uh, a little attentive when you are watching it so that you get to understand it in one go. Even then, if you are unable to do it, you are at liberty to play it again and again to understand the concepts. So in the next class, I will be seeing you with the other um, uh, property of liquids at rest that's going to be surface tension. Till then, stay safe and keep yourself fit. Thank you.